Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Today, I think we're gonna do something, another comparison. Uh, I was riding my fat cat last night and uh, well, it made me think it would be a neat thing to pull out the 87, this is a 1987, as well as the 86. Uh, and it was a good idea since the 87 is right there, but the 86 is way, way, you can't even see it. You can see the handlebars. Oh, there's some bars right there. So we are going to move some things around. This is my wintertime setup and uh, you know, I've tried to do some work in here while everything is crowded. So I need to move some things around. So we're gonna start with that and then get on to the fat cat. So after I recorded all this video and I'm putting it together here, I was doing a little extra research and I probably should have done it beforehand because I was reading this interesting article about the Fat Cat TR200 and how it's among the rarest, most downplayed dirt bikes from the 80s and how it competed with Yamaha's big wheel 200s and not so much the 250s, I'm sorry, the 350s, they were out there. But uh went on to say, and I didn't mention this in the latter part of the video, the uh, the motor is basically a detuned version of the second gen ATC 200X motor, but a big difference is the the motor has electric start, unlike the ATC 200X, and also an automatic clutch, so you're not pulling in that clutch lever to shift. And I questioned this, but this article was talking about changes that were made to the design of the uh, Fat Cat as a result of the 1986 AMA production rule, and that hurt the machine's potential. And they were talking about the frame was potentially going to have be made of titanium instead of steel, and the plastic was going to be carbon fiber, but I really find that hard to believe. They also said the power output was, was targeted to be 45 horsepower. And uh, that just that's insane. But I thought this was really neat. The uh, the one of the attributes that they were going after. They started designing this apparently back in '84, but they said it was supposed to have TR in the name because that was going to stand for totally radical. And uh, I thought that was pretty neat. But the, basically, the specs are uh, 199.1 cc, nine to one compression. They had it listed as a top speed of 50 miles an hour with a weight of 264 pounds, so that's pretty impressive. And we know, because we've tested the top speed of the, the Fat Cat, we know that these things will do about 56 miles an hour according to my, uh, I guess that was the 86 I was riding during my top speed run and crash. I've never seen nothing like it. Landed over that hill, moved around some, and then just jumped up. We all have this one big eye, and they make this humming sound. Introducing the Honda Fat Cat. It's got an electric starter and no clutch, so it's easy to ride. And when it comes to fun, there's nothing like it on Earth. They come from Mars. I knew this from out of town. The Fat Cat gets a whole new animal. Well, we have moved some things around. Well, that's bright. We've opened up a corridor here. We've given Lance his uh, rightful spot between the 84 and the 86 200X. So Lance, welcome to your new home. Nosed in next to some 250Rs. But all this allowed us to pull that 86 out. And here, are the fat cats and there goes my son he helped move things around isn't that nice so the 1986 and 1987 honda fat cat tr200 two-year only machine only available in white fenders with a blue seat however what little i do know about this i do know that they came with accessories that you could get in blue or white. So this one has the headlight guard and the rear rack, the smaller rear rack. You could get a wider rear rack. 
and I believe the accessories came in blue or white. You'll notice this one has a blue kickstand, and this one has a white kickstand. And I'm going to have to do some research to determine if that's an 86 attribute and then 87 got a white one or you could get a kickstand in either color was that an option i don't know but i think my goal for today is just to do some comparisons and see what's what uh the 86 though it looks a little bit crustier i think than the 87 the 86 is a uh, a more original machine it has uh original fenders where these are reproductions they're not Meyer uh, I don't know the gentleman's name that was making these and selling them but you'll see like where it says automatic clutch electric starter see how those curves aren't as hard and crisp as these and that's a good indicator when you're looking at Meyer versus versus aftermarket or Meyer or aftermarket versus OEM uh, the main difference is Honda's fenders are all injection molded and if you're familiar with injection molding you've got one half of a mold comes down meets another half and they inject you know liquid plastic basically you know that's hot and it injects in there and it can fill all the nooks and crannies and that's how that is made where most reproduction plastic is thermal form so they have a sheet of plastic that is heated and then laid over a mold and then there's a vacuum process to draw that material into the mold to make it conform to that shape but with that style of molding excuse me i was going to cough there but with that style of molding you're limited uh as to what shapes you can make you know you can't have necessarily uh those hard edges that you'd want some of the complex shapes you know where where honda would build up uh plastic to you know mount something uh like for instance the the mud flap on the 350x on the rear fender you know it has those little stud holes where the knurled nut goes up in to receive the screws that hold on the rear mud flap you can't do that with a thermal forming process. You can attach a bracket to do that job, but uh, anyway, I'm I'm getting off in the weeds. So back to these. So this has a headlight guard. They did come with a front rack you could get. I'll do my homework about the kickstand. The rear racks were an option. You'll notice they have a neutral light choke is on the handlebar here this one is from Shamokin Honda if you saw my video when I brought this home we mentioned this we kind of went through this machine at that point I believe these to be original handlebars this uh this was an aftermarket you know crossbar pad the bruiser that was my nickname when I was a little bit bruiser my dad used to call me that the bruise but let's look this has black clamps white triple top triple this is a white top triple with aluminum so it's 87 has the aluminum clamps now i don't know if those bars are original i can tell you right now they're they don't clamp down right so the clamps aren't tight either definitely not as tight as these so i'm guessing let's look at them together yeah these go down more and those flare more these bars are not correct it's not wide enough here at the bottom to uh to properly squeeze so that's something picking apart my machines here but you know what this does have look at that tire that's original tire dunlop 24 and a half by 8 by 11. It's an oddball tire. This, I believe, is also original. Dunlop, 24 and a half, 8 by 11. A lot more wear on this one. So, if I had to guess, that's probably original to the machine. This one is probably a replacement. And a nice replacement. 
Got this from my buddy Toby. This one. This one I got from a guy in uh, in outside of Pittsburgh, and he reached out to me. Same guy that Lance the uh, 200X came from. So this is the one I did the uh, speed runs on and uh, crashed in the snow, and that's how I realized how dangerous fat cats are. These are far more dangerous than than a three wheeler, a 250R, a 350X. These are. They make you feel like you're cozy, but you're not. So this is the original rear tire. Let's see, this is also a Dunlop, a 23 and a half by eight by 11. So one inch shorter wheel on the back. Very similar tread pattern to a 350X or 250R. That's war. I'm sure they're super hard to find. Let's look at the brakes. Drum brake, front and rear, not hydraulic. Then, let's see, this is 87, so that is denoted by the H right there. J, made in Japan. Forks are thin little guys. These are not correct fork boots. As far as I know, they don't make uh, a reproduction that's super similar to the original on these, so that's kind of unfortunate. I'm looking for differences. The, uh, the guards on the exhaust appear to be the same shape. I know with 350Xs, sometimes they are different. Or for instance, with the 350X, they are different. You know what? I think I'm noticing a difference. Nope. It's just the angle. This one just needs some love, I think. With all my spare time, maybe I'll, I'll pull this into the shop. But honestly, it probably won't happen soon. Biggest difference. You probably noticed it already. 86 has a black motor. 87 as a silver motor. So real quick, that is your quick visual. I know this must be an 87, it has a silver motor. This must be an 86. So I'm noticing decals. This is an original Fat Cat decal. It's kind of got like some pixelation there to make the color transition. Very neat decal. My wife was asking me if that's, that's original and it is. They did cool stuff like that. Now that is a lot darker orange and it fades to a lighter orange where this kind of fades to a yellow. And the transition is just kind of gradual. So I was talking to my buddy Bruce Allman. He's working on some new decals for me, but he said he's got some awesome, good quality side panels off a of fat cat from Palin. What's that guy's name that lives down in Connecticut? He's a Vinny Staffa. Yeah, that guy. He, uh, he loaned Bruce some side panels to, uh, to make really accurate reproductions. So they are on the way. If you have one of these that is going to need it, you know where to get them. And I think that might be it. I don't know enough about them. These are original fork boots, but they are beat and dry. And I'm sure if I rode this any amount, they would be cracked soon. This has got a crack here, which is unfortunate. But it makes sense because these things are, are so dangerous. They, they pretty much just jump on the ground when you're riding them. Neutralite, did I mention that? This one has the hole for it, but it's missing the neutralite. I don't know if it's down in there somewhere. I don't see it. So neither neither of these are perfect, like I've said about 14 times already. This headlight guard has a guide for the the front brake line, brake cable. This one does that. I don't know if that replaces something that normally bolts in or what. The chain covers appear to be the same year to year. What other differences do you see, Palin? 
Oh, I see one. The uh, motor mount on the 86 has a hole in the middle. And on the 87, it doesn't. And I'm noticing the rear motor mount looks like that on the 86 and you can see the bolt and you can see the bolt here on this one but it's different it's like stiffened squared out i don't know if that was to correct a cracking issue speaking of cracks look at that the pavement's really hot but i got a little crack right there I gotta stop buying junk Is that crack tail? I wonder if that's a weak spot. Does it just look like it's cracked? It looks like it's cracked on both. Huh. Well, how about that? Some of the racks I've seen have bars, one like this and then like this. I've seen other ones that just have horizontal bars, so one was 86, one was 87. I will overlay over here uh, pictures of the different racks that they offer. But these are Honda seats. Not recovered. And as far as I know, they're crack free, tear free. A little, little blemish back there. One little blemish will take you right down from, from mint status. Wait, this? Oh yeah, junk. Look at this. <laughs> Complete junk. But uh, kind of what got me thinking about these is uh, old uh, Bigfoot Bikes and Brews did a uh, shootout between some of his builds and a 85, I think it was 85, maybe it was 83, 110. But I'd like to give him a shout out. Great channel, super creative guy, and he uh, he does a lot of cool builds. So if you if you like, you know, guys doing cool stuff, uh, which is why I'm sure you're here. Make sure you go over and, and give him a subscribe and a like. And if you haven't subscribed and liked to, to this channel, you got to do that. But as I wrap this up, I want I'm looking at the machines behind me. I want to tease a couple videos that are coming a lot of people have been asking for this and it's coming so we will be coming at you with a 200 s 185 s comparison all the years 81 82 83 of the 185 s and 84 85 86 of the 200 s and we'll point out the differences to the best of our ability we'll we'll uh point out the comparisons but those are coming I, I wheeled these out you watch us do the timeshare timeshare <laughs> time lapse of uh moving these things the tricky one to get out is my 84 with the honda line fairing back there but i'll get that out as soon as i can but thank you so much for watching uh it was kind of anticlimactic i don't know I don't know a lot about these fat cats other than they are terribly dangerous and that's me joking but they are a lot of fun they're unique i know you know name of my channel this old trike i'm a trike guy three-wheeler aficionado for sure but uh when it comes to these bikes i think they're they're neat and uh palin agrees don't you think palin did you name these stanley and stanley, stanley, and stanley. Yeah. It's like Simon and Simon. Remember that TV show? No. No, I do. Uh, so from Palin and I, Stanley and Stanley, um, thanks for watching. Again, like and subscribe. Check out Bigfoot Bites and Brews. Check out my buddy uh, MRC Builds. Check out all the, the, the cool Honda, vintage Honda guys out there making content for YouTube. And have a fantastic day. Thanks. so dangerous, especially one-handed, holding your cell phone.
daughter wants to race. Smoke dirt. Oh, they got a balance. We really got a balance on a three wheeler. Oh, now there's obstacles. Got an audience. Ooh. Oh, there's, there's the girl.